Hi, this is Brenda, and I'm going to host the Body Thrive Book Club today. It's uh, in our group, it's called Perceptive Habits, and we're on Habit 7 and Habit 8. Habit 7 is sitting in silence or meditation, and Habit 8 is, it's called Healthier Eating Guidelines. Um, what it really means is more along the lines of like a rhythmic eating, so eating specific times, leaving enough time between without snacks. So it, just kind of aligning with that so that you have a consistent level of energy and you're pulling the pulling from the fat to have the energy rather than from a constant food source. And I'll just get started here. On habit seven, sitting in silence. On habit seven, sitting in silence. The reason why you want to do this is to live empowered. You need to clear your mind and digest your experiences. Setting Purposefully, in silence, you digest your thoughts, ideas, and experiences. You become available to profound insights and bigger perspectives. You gain access to inner freedom. You tap into a big time, big space perspective, which erases the effects of earthly stress. You learn how to learn and how to align directly from consciousness, from source. You suddenly allow the fabric of your sight you have your physiology to knit together in a subtle vibratory field, which lends itself to higher immune integ integration and tissue rejuvenation. That goes kind of deep into it. But the uh, when you're new to meditating or you've tried it, but you haven't gotten yourself in the habit of it, in the beginning, you just want to kind of figure out a, a time that works and use a habit trigger. So for me, when I started off, when my partner would leave for work in the morning, that's when I would just drop on the couch and, and sit in silence. And I would do anywhere from a few minutes to 30 minutes. Most of the time it was just, a, you know, even five to 10 minutes in the beginning. And it wasn't every day. So just kind of allow yourself to slowly add the habit in and see where it fits in in your schedule. It's, it's going to be different for each person. You just have to see where it kind of fits in based on what you have going on in your life. The other thing is there's a, a wide range of meditation. There's just from sitting quietly. There's walking meditation. You can do guided meditation. And the app Insight is uh, Insight Timer. It's, it's a good one to go on to, there's a lot of free ones on there. You don't have to pay for all the meditations on there. There's just a certain amount that plenty of it that's free. You could check on YouTube and make a playlist of, of meditations that appeal to you. If you want to focus on something specific, you know, like the, the sound, the vibrations, or if you want to look at the, the chakras or a very visual guided meditation, and it depends too on whether you're doing it in the morning, in the afternoon, or in the evening. In the evening, you could look at some of the the ones that are for winding down and for going to sleep. Those those are nice too. I I do every morning before I get out of bed out of bed, I do a very short grounding meditation, and that works really well. That that helps if you have any kind of anxiety or stress level that's fairly high. When you get in the habit of doing even just a few minutes, like three or four deep breaths, and and then picturing the grounding, I, I use the chakras from the head all the way down to the toe, and then the roots coming out of the feet and grounding into the earth. And if you want to go deeper with that, you can take it to the earth star chakra, which is a frisbee shape. It's about the size of your shoulders, and it's silver. And it energy people say it's equal to the you're however tall you are it's down that far beneath you a lot of other people say it's only like anywhere between six and 12 inches i i'm in the energy medicine field so i like i like that it's further down <laughs> but you could once you've rooted to the earth then you can root to the core of the earth from that earth star chakra and you'll actually feel a little bit more of a heaviness when you do it in your body you'll feel it in your body like that gravitational pull so it's it's kind of it's really good when you need a very solid grounding practice. But just kind of explore some things, and if you if you're on YouTube, just make yourself a 
a, a you know a playlist and and save those and you can listen to those i i do i love guided meditation i do a lot of those too so let me know what you end up choosing what you find it works for you i can tell you um in the beginning i had a hard time sticking with doing this consistently every day but once i had figured out a good habit trigger it worked it worked a lot easier and 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 the fact that you don't get stuck on the idea that you have to do a certain amount of time every day if you only have a few minutes do a few minutes meditation is collective over um, the period of time that you do it it's the same thing like when it whenever I, when i do a tarpana or ancestral healing practice that's generally about 20 minutes but the indian gurus feel like that is equal to four hours of meditation so there there's there's so many different options that you can look at for meditation and just start out small though you don't have to do anything huge and you know a lot of them and anybody that's in yoga or is getting into yoga there's a lot of focus on breathing so you, whenever you're doing breath body practices you can also use that as a time to meditate as well and and that's part of your meditation There's also dynamic meditation that's a little bit more advanced, and I'm I'm actually learning that real, uh, right now in real time over the next uh, over the next month and, and putting it into practice. and And I'll explain that more. It I'll cover it, it when I'm teaching the class on the one year journey. I may touch on it a little bit here in our group too because it's just really fascinating. Mm -hmm. Another thing that you can do is if you like to have like a, a specific area. If you can meditate in the same spot every day and you can make it like a little special area. Some people treat it like an altar, you know, with, with things that resonate with them, whether it's the crystals or stones or statues, candles, uh, fresh flowers or plants, Bible, um, po a book of poetry, uh, any of those things that, you know, tarot cards, I mean, anything that suits you. And it can be as little or as much of, of the items you want in your area and just treat it like a sacred space. And that's the other nice thing is um, one of the the tips in the back of the book is, is about creating it like a ritual because that's what helps set the habit a little easier. For some people, it may be just setting, you know, an alarm on your phone to remind you to, to, to meditate at a certain time, just make sure it's fitting right in your schedule where you, you have a tendency to be able to sit down and do that. At, you know, at first that was one of my most resistant areas and now it's, it's I do it every day and, and I do it multiple times throughout the day. So it's, it's, the more you realize how much more it connects you to the higher consciousness and the higher wisdom and how effective that is for you, the more you'll do it and, and you'll be more comfortable with it too. And if you're more comfortable too, I mean, the other option is you could meditate in a group. I mean, that's something, and especially online right now, there's so many communities and, and meditation online. And that could be something that I could even bring in a little bit. There may be, that, that's a good idea actually. <laughs> My, set up where we could do like maybe on the weekend when pe people have a chance or sometime in one of the evenings during the week where we can kind of get together and just do like a a, a guided meditation that that would be a good idea okay and habit eight is the healthier eating guidelines and i'm just gonna i'm gonna read from that a little bit too and then i'll like i said it's kind of in this area where i'm learning as well is it's evolving more of into rhythmic eating. So that's why I want to kind of guide you down that path. What to do, eat only, and this is on page 161 for habit eight, eat only two or three meals a day without snacking. You'll burn fat between meals and be hungry to thoroughly enjoy them. Reconnect with the chicken scratching sensation in your stomach, signifying readiness to eat, and you will provoke a deeper fat burning metabolism. Empower your digestion to work undistributed by taking only water between meals. And why you want to do this, nourishment is, is as much about when you eat and how you eat as it is about what you, what you eat. When you eat only a few times a day, you burn fat 
a steady energy source between meals. This habit of honoring emptiness and fullness, rest and digestion, and hunger and satiation. It attunes you to the law of pulsation for maximum energy. Digestion requires energy. When you eat emotionally or too frequently, you tax your digestion, rendering less energy available for everything else you want to do. If you tax your digestion repeatedly, a residual of poor digestive food builds up in your GI tract. The buildup is grime in your physical, mental, and emotional gears. So you want to up-level your energy and cultivate deep power by improving your digestion. And this is uh, some of the things that we teach in the group is a certain level of is mindfulness type of eating or slowing down a little bit. So sometimes it's just see what works for you. Just like you kind of sit down quietly rather than in front of the TV and you eat a little slower, set your fork down in between bites. If you have to take more, chew more, um, it's one of the things you're almost like uh, juicing your food and making it easier to digest by chewing it more. And that's also going to satiate you faster too. So just try some different things with, with that. And, and notice um, after about one to three hours when you, if you feel hungry, then see if you can drink some water and or do some an activity either walking or do like a little bit of a house chore or something else to kind of get yourself away from grabbing a snack because sometimes you're just looking for that distraction with the food or you haven't gotten used to not snacking yet give it give it a little bit of time and and the bigger thing is when you eat a, a bigger lunch with with healthy fats in it that's going to sustain you better and the healthy fats includes the, you know, the, the ghee, the clarified butter, um, coconut oil, olive oil, any of those. And then um, nuts and soaked nuts, because a lot of times you can put those in, in, in like in the soups or the salads or different things. It's, it's all that, that little extra that gives you that healthy fat and that, and that a little more satisfying for some people that need that. And just try not to, you mainly want to try not to eat within three hours of going to bed. So just kind of try to fit that in the time frame that you normally eat your last meal and just try to eat lighter on that last meal. And the emotional eating, this is something I kind of hit on recently, a, a little deeper understanding for it than I had in the beginning. And I, I it has been a off and on um, issue with myself learning the habits. So what helps a lot is as you learn these habits that you lean more in toward the habits rather than putting them to the side. If you fall off with something, try to get back to the good habit, you know, like the same day, the next day, just, you know, basically let yourself fall off once and, and then go back to the habits. That's, that's what you kind of want to work towards. So it's that deeper connection of yourself into the self-care habits. When you're going toward emotional eating, there's something outside of you that's kind of pulling you away from that inner path. And that's a signal for you to kind of look at what, what, bring awareness around what the emotion is and then let yourself kind of experience that if you need to and and then see if you can just kind of release it and I mean just however you want to release it energetically you know you just want to kind of release it and that way it kind of frees you from being disconnected from your from yourself and your habits and your ability to feel good by picking, making the right choices, basically. That's that's what we're looking for. Um, on average, if in, in the book, it says allow 13 hours between dinner and breaking your fast in the morning. I, there's a lot of times where I'm around 12, between 12 and 14, but 12 is, is good if you're, if you're, especially in the beginning, don't, you don't have to push yourself so hard. In the book, it talks a little bit about the Ayurveda, the six tastes 
bitter, pungent, astringent, sour, sweet, salty. When we talk more about Ayurveda, and I think that's what I'm going to be covering um, the rest of this month and into February is going to be Ayurveda and how that benefits you and, and, and because it's such a big piece of, of what I'm what I present and, and how it integrates into our lives. So I'll go a little bit more into that. But you can read about it in the book. It's on page 170 and 171. With each dosha, your constitution, which is that one you can do with the Banyan Botanicals quiz, and it'll tell you what your constitution, it'll tell you what your constitution is, help you with understanding which of the six tastes you need to balance your dosha. That's, that's what that tells you. And then it, it also covers a little bit of our limiting beliefs around food in this, in this part. And it gives you an idea of how you can even write it for yourself. So what's my limiting belief about a certain food? And then what's your higher truth about the food, which kind of helps shift your thinking towards making that better choice. And on the next call, we're going to be talking about habit nine, which is come to your senses and habit 10, which is easeful living. And that'll, that's on the, I believe that's on the 27th. Yeah, that's on the 27th of January. That'll be the last one for this quarter. And then I, I'll start that back up again um, for another quarter. The, on the, the last quarter, we're gonna talk about the, the last two habits and then I'll start the quarter back up again. And anybody can stay in it as long as they want. There'll, there'll be new information. You know, Some of it will sound a little bit the same, but um, this is such an evolving education on these on these habits the self-care habits that it's just the same as i've i've been in it for over two years and i hear new stuff all the time while i'm in the main part of the classes myself so what i'll do is i'm i'm still working on all the the themes of the each month to to, to for us to talk about and i i'm pretty sure i'm going to start off with the ayurveda as our subject just because it's a, a big part of this self-care habits and in and, and the integration of it into everything that we do. And then I'll see what all else. I know one of the things will be, again, on the microgreens, and then they'll be most likely on more about the fasting because the one of the newer things and what I'm actually in the middle of experimenting with right now is the fast mimicking diet. You can look it up a little bit. It's but it's um, based on five days where you do like 500 calories, and it's a very specific kind of things that you eat. There's a certain range of things that you eat, and our group in the in my community, they they've extended it into more things. So I I have a little bit more insight than what's in the book, what's offered in the book itself on on the the longevity diet is what it's called and it's called fast mimicking. But overall, I'll probably talk a little bit about fasting and, and intermittent fasting because it's such a amazing tool to use for your health and for your digestive system. I just wanna discuss it enough so that you can see some of the benefits in it and, and even maybe experiment with it a little bit. It's something to, to really check into. The more I've become familiar with it over this past year, the more I use it as a tool and, and I'm getting better at it. it. It's something, again, that it's just progressively, you get better with it. And then I'm also gonna, I may incorporate another book in the in the book club itself, besides the Body Thrive book. And I'll, I'll, I may put some out there as an option and then we kind of choose which one. If, if it's, if nobody has time to pick, then, I, then I'll just probably pick one and, and go with it. And I'll kind of lean it into the themes that are coming up in this year. Thanks for listening. And I'll send the, the link for the replay and, and some more information on there as well.